Hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us, uh, our open design section for 2022 Coast Cup. So our first talk is the open design panel. And we have a few speakers that are from abroad join us, and this section will be all in English. So we're very excited to this panel because we haven't really had panel in Coast Cup for a very long time. And this panel's uh, older speakers here are also uh, contributors to Bitcoin Design Guide project, which is a open design project that circle around the topic of Bitcoin to pretty much just like give you a guideline, uh, help you to navigate through the complexities of Bitcoin. So in the future of uh, Bitcoin design guide will also include like consumer wallet, um, merchant interactions, as well as like financial applications and much more in the future. So people can really get involved with uh, uh, Bitcoin communities easier to make Bitcoin world more accessible to just general public. And with all these contributors, um, we cannot do it without them. Yeah. So big thanks to them. And let me introduce one of the speak uh, first speakers here, uh, panelists, sorry, uh, Christopher Ono. He is a seasonal UX designer and focused on improving the user interface for Bitcoin, and as well as promoting open source, uh, open design collaborations. And second panelist is Stefan Delomi, is a designer as well as a front end developers, and also the contributors to the Bitcoin design guy. And he also focuses on building Bitcoin online communities as well as IRL communities online. And another third one is Bosch. Sorry, my pronunciation of this site weird. Uh, Bitcoin product. He is a Bitcoin product designer and focus on improving the lighting network, uh, make it more like user friendly, uh, which will enable uh, Bitcoin to be accessed by billions of people. And another um, another one is. At Pratt, the panelist, he is also a product designer. Focus on project is also Bitcoin focused to help to to bring Bitcoin products to become more responsive, usable, and as well as more scalable. Last but not least, Connor Ocus. He is a product manager at Spiral, and Spiral is an independent uh, Bitcoin focused entities that focus on found free and open source uh, project that help to improve Bitcoin's privacy, securities, UX, and ability to scale. So let's dive into today's talk, and later on we will have live and QA from the panelists over the world. Enjoy. Open design panel at COSCOP 2022. My name is Christoph. I am a contributor to the Bitcoin design community. And while everyone here on the panel today is uh, part of the design community or uh, part of the larger Bitcoin ecosystem, uh, we try to talk more generally about open design and share some of the stories about you know, how, how everyone got here, what their motivations are, what their background are, and hopefully it's interesting to you know, the larger audience as well. And then make sure to stay on afterwards because there's another presentation about open design that goes into more community. But I'll stop talking right now and hand it over right away for uh, our panelists here to introduce themselves, talk a little bit about who they are, what they do, and how they get there. Um, Bosch, why don't you uh, kick us off? And you're muted. Hey, uh, all right. So yeah, my name's uh, Bosch. Uh, I'm a Bitcoin product designer, I guess you could say. Uh, been quite active in the Bitcoin space for uh, six or so years. I uh, had a few small startups that when I first got involved in it, uh, that kind of led me down the path of being a product designer. Uh, had a little bit of dev experience here or there. Um, and throughout the years, I've been working on a few, quite a few several open source projects. 
Not, most notably is probably uh, the Bitcoin Design Guide, which uh, everyone here in this call is a part of building, uh, as well as a wallet called Zeus, which uh, is like a lightning Bitcoin wallet, which means it's just an easy way to make payments and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I'll uh, move it on to Ed. Do you want to go next? I think you're muted as well. <laughs> also muted. All right, we've got to get better at that. Uh, yeah, hey, my name is uh, Ed Pratt. Uh, I'm a product designer at uh, primarily at Peakshift uh, and also contributed to uh, open source Bitcoin projects. Um, I've kind of been doing this for a few years now. Um, and I think uh, just as a fun fact, I believe I joined the Bitcoin design community around block height 633,000. Uh, Stephen, how you doing? Hey, I'm uh, not on mute, hopefully. Uh, I'm Stephen uh, Delorme. Um, yeah, so uh, I also uh, hang out in the Bitcoin design community. I, um, you know, before I uh, worked in Bitcoin, I um, was a freelance web developer and then, you know, did kind of creative ad agency type stuff before that. Um, but yeah, so now I'm full time open source Bitcoin. Um, and uh, I focus a lot of my efforts on the Bitcoin design guide, uh, particularly around uh, adding Lightning Network content. Um, like Bosch said, just a kind of a it's a technology for making quick payments over Bitcoin. Um, also working on just kind of initiatives and campaigns to kind of push the uh, Bitcoin industry forward to you know um, you know kind of help projects coordinate and adopt new technologies. And I try to contribute time to other open source projects in the Bitcoin ecosystem as well. Um, and I'm uh, funded by Spiral um, so that I can do this kind of open source work full time. Um, so maybe it would be good to kick it over to Connor next. Hello, hello. My name's Connor Okus. I'm also a contributor to the Bitcoin design community over the last kind of 18 months, two years. I currently work at um, Spiral. Um, Spiral is an initiative to help one make uh, Bitcoin like a global currency um that everyone can use and is accessible to everyone as well as helping push the open source bitcoin ecosystem forward um and one of the ways we do that is and that i'm focused on is funding designers so we'll get a little bit into that a bit later but um i do a bit of everything a bit of product management a bit of software development developer experience um, but the things that are probably most relevant to this conversation and that you guys will probably be most interested in this is the funding aspect of, of open source design work. So we'll definitely touch on that a bit later as well. Awesome. Thanks for those intros. And uh, let's let's get right back to the uh, name of this panel. Like what, what does open design mean to you? How do you how do you define it and how do you practice it? Uh, who wants to share some thoughts on that? Yeah, sure. I guess uh, I could jump in on that. Uh, so I guess open design to me is, uh, I guess, in a really simple way to put it is uh, designing in the open, uh, like developers uh, code in the open on GitHub, and they publish all their code publicly open design pretty simply is uh, designing in public like you do, uh, like like developers do at GitHub and making that all open. Um, for example, the project Zeus that uh, I mentioned at the start that I've uh, been quite involved in for the past uh, two years or so. Uh, everything I do is completely open, all the design. We do public calls, we go do the reviews of the designs and stuff like that. So it uh, very aligns uh, with the whole ethos of open source tech and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I'll pass on to someone else if they have anything to add around that. Yeah, I think an important um, thing to note just about open design and open source in general is that like, um, you know, open design goes a step beyond just publishing your work work for you know for free or, or publicly because you know you could imagine like someone's a developer and they you know write code and they put it under an open source license and put it on github and that's fine but um, that doesn't necessarily just because the code is open doesn't necessarily mean that the development process and in, in which you build it is open if all that happens behind closed doors then you know it's just that the code's open source it's kind of like a legal formality it's not really like the the product is uh, you know, being built out in the open. And so with open design, you know, uh, you know, I think of it in a, in a similar way, like you're not just like putting your Figma file out there or your design file for people to see. You're actually, um, you know, pu putting stuff out there and soliciting feedback and having these kind of conversations in public about what goals you're trying to meet with the product and, 
uh, you know, what trade-offs you might need to make and, you know, getting input from people on how you're actually going to build this thing. Uh, and so that's, I think that's a really important point there. And just to add on to that, um, I think open design goes, uh, if you share this more broadly, you can actually design things that are bigger than an individual or bigger than a group. And it's uh, agencies, companies cannot necessarily do that because there's always certain hierarchies involved. But I also know a lot of designers, they're very hesitant about sharing their design and soliciting feedback. They're very protective. Is that something that you also had to struggle with or that you had to overcome? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's uh, there, there's like kind of a, um, you know, mentality in, in the graphic designer world that uh, there's just, you know, there's always a joke about clients who uh, want you to, you know, work for them for free, design a logo for them for free, build a website so you can get exposure, all that kind of stuff. So. Um, it, it's definitely something that as a, a, a designer, you're, you're kind of, you have a knee jerk reaction to it usually about uh, people trying to get that stuff at, out of you. But, um, you know, if, if you think about it, you know, and, and you should be concerned and worried about those things because you have to uh, take care of yourself and, and uh, support yourself. But, you know, having said that, if you do um, work that's, that's uh, in a more of an open source manner, where it's like you're actually building a project that other people can jump in and contribute and um, help you maintain and and something that can uh, like really help out whether it's Bitcoin or whatever industry you're in. If you're actually building something that can be used by many people um, that the whole industry can collaborate on, that's it's a different scenario than a client um, asking you to build a website for free. So it's just got to got to think about the the kind of different use cases there. Yeah, like just on your point about like. Uh companies getting people to do free work for experience or whatever it may be. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit related to this, but I think uh, uh, contributing to open design or open source software as a designer is probably a much better path to take if you do want to get experience and do it for free, not get paid, go uh, uh, contribute to projects where it's actually going to have some value because open source uh, is severely lacking uh, most, most like designers and also product managers and stuff like that. So you can make an impact, learn a lot. Um, and yeah, it's really a good path to take if you're new to design or, and you want to get your, your feet wet. And also learning uh, open source and being involved in open source community is a great way to deal with developers and learn how to uh, work with developers because that's going to be a big part of uh, any d designer's job is like, you know, dealing with developers and handing off designs and stuff like that. So being involved in open source will teach you like the lingo and how they kind of do things, which is, which is pretty valuable, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just to add to that as well, I think that sometimes it can be, or it can feel maybe slightly intimidating getting involved in the open source realm, uh, particularly when you're thrown into a community, especially like the Bitcoin community, where there are a lot of really amazing and quite inspiring uh, Bitcoin projects out there, which are actually kind of close to the ground and are open source and things that you can kind of get involved with. And I would just kind of advise people to, to go for it. Um, we did kind of briefly touch upon the the idea of kind of like process. Uh, Bosch kind of mentioned, um, obviously learning about these relationships with developers and other designers, product managers, and things like that. And uh, I think the open design has a slightly more interesting process. I think that the instead of having a hierarchy, it's um, it's more of a democracy. But at least with a democracy, there kind of has to be clearer rules of how things are going to work. Um, how designs get implemented, uh, project management processes, design systems. Uh, so that's one thing to bear in mind as well, I think, which is actually quite a good tool for kind of learning about the professional realm as well as like how to how to work with people, but also how to sort of work within processes and kind of self regulate and self manage uh, other people within projects as well. Speaking about difficulties, what was what was something that you really struggled with getting into this? That was a, a, a burden for you until you could kind of figure it out. Was there something specific you can you can share? Uh, well, I think um, I've had a slightly interesting journey into kind of open source and the open design realm in that I've actually never really done closed source projects. 
um, I kind of left university and went straight into it, uh, got kind of interested in Bitcoin and then started designing, doing products and a bunch of startups and things, which were all kind of open source in the end. So um, it's kind of actually the only process which I know. So a lot of the frustrations and feedbacks are probably just like relative to that. Um, I think in my particular experience, though, just kind of getting into it, uh, particularly the Bitcoin design community as well, just a lot of really talented people in here. I think sometimes it's kind of hard just to know where to start um, and how to kind of start your journey in open design. And um, the Bitcoin design community was actually really, really great for that. And even just seeing the amount of people that are kind of posting in the Slack, looking for projects to work on or people who are looking for feedback on their projects, people who don't currently have designers but are looking for designers. Like there's actually so much to get involved with and so much material to kind of digest and grasp. Um, so I would just advise people to just jump in the deep end really and just swim because it's, uh, I think it's easier than it looks. You just kind of have to get a little bit acquainted with the process is what I'd say. Yeah. I was literally going to say exactly the same thing because, um, because when you join this community with thousands of members at this point, it can be like a bit daunting to, you know, speak up and, and make your voice heard. Um, but I think there's so much value that you can add straight away, even if it's just like reviewing someone's piece of work, like that in and of itself will one, help you understand like um, what what value they're trying to add. It will help you build a relationship with that person or people who are working on that specific um, work. And um, it does, I would also say it does, it does take time, like joining any community, like, in, in everyday life or in, in the virtual world, it, it oftentimes takes a, a bit of just time for people to get familiar with your communication style and and um, the current processes and things that are already in place in that community. So I would like urge people to be be patient, but like the Bitcoin design community specifically is very like, very welcoming and, and very friendly. So you know if you do identify aspects of work where you feel like you can you can uh, add value, like feel free to, to reach out to, to different members in the community or, you know, leave a message in the Slack channel um, to be practical or leave an issue uh, on, on GitHub, for example, and kind of make your, your voice heard that way. Stephen, do you have anything to add there or? Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's probably one of the challenges, uh, you know, if you're coming in from a non-open source world, like if you're a designer coming in from like more of an agency environment, then it's 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 going to be weird to you just the kind of absolute anarchy of open source, um, just in that, you know, you're, you, you no longer have, it depends on the project, right? But not all projects have clear decision makers. And um, and that's okay, uh, but you know, you, it's it's something you have to get used to. I think, um, in terms of being able to like put your work out there and you know, like not you know tell other people what to do, but you're trying to argue your case, like are you know argue for like okay, this is this is the way I think that we should um, approach this. Here's the reasons why, um, and and so it, it's it's it. You, you have kind of an ab, a, a absolute freedom and that nobody can really, you know, you know, force anybody to do anything. Um, you know, I mean, some people are volunteers, some people have grants. It just depends on, you know, what open source community you're in. But um, yeah, you definitely have to kind of find good ways to um, manage your own time and also um, get kind of creative with how you, you know, arrive at decision making when, you know, consensus is so distributed. So is it, yeah, is like, it worth doing that? Yeah, I think so. But I think it depends on what you're trying to build. I mean, the thing is, is that, uh, you know, it, it depends on what, what you want to build. Uh, you know, there, there, there's a situation where um, uh, you may need to move quick on something you're trying to build. And if you're trying to, you know, move quick on something, then maybe you want a more like traditional startup environment where you know, and, and the code is going to be as closed source and uh, the team can iterate very, very quickly and ship something a lot quicker uh, because the decision makers and what they're building is very, very clear. Um, 
you know, that might you may, maybe you think of that as one end of the spectrum. And then on the other end of the spectrum, maybe you have um, uh, just completely open source, completely, you know, democratized pro project. And uh, it might be that over the course of 10 years, that project becomes incredibly powerful and uh, incredibly um, well built and tons of people all around the world use it and it's interoperable and blah, blah, blah. And, and that's good, but it took 10 years to get to that point because the kind of slower open source, you know, nature, it, it, it might've moved a little bit slower to get there. That's not to say that all open source is slow. Sometimes open source is incredibly click. I'm just saying that, you know, you have to think about what it is you're trying to build and what the trade-offs are. Yeah. Uh, Bosch, you wanted to add something there earlier? Yeah, like everyone covered uh, pretty much all the points I was going to bring up, but just, I guess, one bit of advice of getting into uh, open source or open source in general and open source design um, to avoid kind of some issues is, I think it's a good idea to like work on more than one project. Like, for example, I worked on Zeus. I've also contributed quite to quite a few others. Um, but like Stephen said, there's no uh, direct decision maker. So sometimes things can feel like they aren't progressing, which, which they are. There's just open source nature of things. Sometimes things move slow. So it's good to have other stuff to work on because if you just focus on one project and then nothing's really happening there, you kind of like, what do I do? Like you, you want to have some other things that you kind of jump around and contribute to. And open source is good like that. You can kind of contribute to multiple things and have your fingers in a lot of pies, which I think is a big benefit of working in open source and open design. So. Yeah. Um, you know, one, one of the points that I was, that I, that I keep thinking about is it's, it sounds very messy and it, and it kind of is. And it is that way because there's a lot of individual freedom. But what glues everything together is because you get a lot of people that have the same idea. They want something specific to exist. They think it's worthwhile. And because they care a lot about it, they make it work. Despite some of these, uh, you know, people might be spread across all over the world through different time zones. Some people take vacation whenever they feel like, or they disappear and come back into a project because they all care about the same thing. That's kind of what makes it uh, worthwhile, that, that type of mission. Um, I think we're getting fairly close to the end here already. I just wanted to bring up uh, the topic of uh, sustainability and funding one more time. And uh, Connor, what do you uh, do? You have any more thoughts on on that? Yeah, I, I'll try and be quick and not too too long winded. But um, yeah, I guess we've spoken a lot um, about open source design, but specifically, like, what what do you do if you're a design designer? and you've identified like a piece of work that you want to do, whether it be, if we're speaking specifically about the Bitcoin design community, whether it be like a more art focused initiative that wants to help tell a different narrative around Bitcoin, whether you want to contribute directly to the Bitcoin design community, whether you want to collaborate on a, a wallet initiative, whether you want to see um, interoperability across different apps and wallets um, with regards to specific ux patterns whatever it might be once you've got to that point you, and you say yeah you want to work on it on a full-time basis um, it's very likely that you're going to need to be able to support yourself financially through ever, throughout that time period that you've identified as as um, getting that work complete um, and one of those options is like what we do at spiral where we provide grants to designers to work on a specific piece of work um, that they've identified. So typically it will work where, you know, you, you submit a proposal about like how you think um, this piece of work is gonna improve the user experience in Bitcoin and we'll kind of evaluate it along with like some of our close relationships in, in, in the wider community as well. And, and if there's like consensus around this piece of work, we'll like work with you to provide no strings attached funding um, typically, like it's over a year, but we have extended a lot of grants as well. And like the like the guys on the panel have said, um, making your impact in open source can, in some instances, take two, three, four years maybe. So that's why we tend to um, give designers and developers at least a year to kind of uh, make their mark and and hopefully beyond that as well. Um, but Spiral is one kind of place where you could you know, propose something and we'd evaluate it and, and get funding that way. But we do try to also encourage um, designers and developers to um, have multiple sources of funding as well. So there are other organizations out there that 
also support um, mainly developers at this point, but we're hoping over time that more designers would get support as well. Um, maybe we can like give um, the viewers like a, a resource list of some of those organizations at, at a later point, but I'm sure if you do enough Googling, you'll, you'll find them. Um, but the, the premise is ultimately the same. Um, so, and, and uh, ultimately the goal is to not have any one designer or developer project dependent on a single source of funding. Um, hopefully the projects that we work on in the Bitcoin space will be deemed public goods over the long term and um, enough of the, the community and society see enough value in it to want to um, see its maintenance and its upkeep over a long time. Um, but again, this is like the long game and, and we've got quite a long, long way to go there. Um, but that is that is a uh, one opportunity uh, uh, amongst uh, like a, a variety of different ways developers can get funding everything from GitHub sponsors to um, direct peer to peer relationships that you might have with people, large organizations like exchanges. Um, so there's quite a, an array of, of options just depending on like your time frame, the project you're working on. Um, so yeah, I mean, if people want to learn more about it, they can feel free to, to reach out to me as well. Excellent. Yeah. And I would also just add one more thing is that, uh, it's also up to us designers to make a case for design because I don't think we're quite there yet. I think it's been, uh, kind of accepted with development, with code, that there is this value and that it's worth supporting it, uh, also financially, but, uh, designers, I feel like they still have to make that case a little bit. And you know, we're creative people and we present our work all the time. So I think everybody here, everybody in the audience, you know, you kind of know what to do if you want to be part of this. Hopefully this was a helpful panel and interesting and you got to hear some insights from some of these really engaged, super talented people here. Thank you all for being part of this panel. And Bosch would like to speak as he's just letting me just know. So what's up Bosch? Uh, yeah, I'd just quickly like to say, if you want to like come follow any of us or join the community, I don't think anyone plugged it, but it's Bitcoin.design and you can join our Slack. It's like got about 3000 people who all work on Bitcoin open source related stuff. But yeah, just thought I'd plug that in there really quickly. Awesome. And we're recording this panel ahead of time, but there will be technically QA happening right after this. And we'll hopefully all be there in person and then we can answer your questions. But thanks for, for tuning in right now. Hello, um, you guys can hear me all right? Yeah, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, okay. Um, yeah, sure I'm gonna can. extend your time. Yeah, because actually, yeah. I'm just gonna post postpone the next section, that's it. Um, now I'm open for everybody to ask questions. Do we have any questions here? Yeah, okay. Um, let me just hand mic. If you can, let me. Sh I don't think you can see. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Uh, first of all, thank you for sharing. Like it was like very inspirational. I'm also a designer, and I'm also a um, community organizer. So I completely know. You know the frustrations and, and all the things that you came through. And, and, and I really like uh, the way you share about um, in the talk. So um, I'm just wondering, um, because well, I, I, I feel like there are a lot of designers that don't even know about open design yet or open source. And uh, there are also a lot of potential designers that want to join these kind of communities. Uh, but it's just like they don't know where to start because when we talk about, I'm not sure, at least from my point of view, uh, maybe you can correct me later on, but a lot of times when we talk about open, open source design, we directly link it to open source design systems, which is a little bit, I don't know, like constraints. 
so I'm just wondering um, what would you recommend for designers that want to contribute to uh, the open de open design communities or open 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 source design in general? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good question. And like, um, uh, you know, the thing is, is that, I mean, like, like Christoph has, has was was saying in, in you know the panel that uh, a lot of times um, you know open source projects may not like consider that they they need to think about the user experience and all that and and so like you know designers have to sometimes kind of argue their case um, in op open source and so um, you know it's 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 tricky because not not every project is going to have a um, neat and easy way for a designer to get involved like it'll it'll be clear on for how to get involved as a developer because it's like oh well obviously they have a github repository so i submit my code there but there's not really a path for a designer to enter but um you know so i think designers have to be a little bit um you know they have to make their case a little bit more and there's um, nothing wrong with uh, just uh mocking up a design for an open source project you like and being like hey i'm a fan of what you're doing uh i created a you know here's a design i created that might be helpful to you what do you think um, posting it here for feedback. Um, what do you think, Crystal? Because isn't that how you kind of got your, your start uh, doing stuff in open source? Yeah, that is exactly how I started. There was one late evening where I was kind of bored and I, I redesigned a, <laughs> it was actually a wallet. And then I, I at 2 a.m. I posted it to the Reddit community. And I said, hey, I, I just made this. You know, I like the application. I thought, you know, this is an idea of what it could look like. And then the next morning, the, uh, you know, I got a lot of uploads in. Uh, developer reached out and said, "Hey, I want to do this." And I had I had no clue about how anything worked in the cryptocurrency space or in open source. But they luckily, you know, they were very helpful to draw me. And so it was really it was just a matter of kind of taking that first step, putting something out there that I thought would be a good improvement. And then maybe I got really lucky. I, I think I got lucky. I'm sure other people's experience might not be the same. But I think just being a little bit bold and trying to make something really good, because I also think that developers oftentimes they don't necessarily look at a project board or a task list. They'll just show up and try to make something. Um, so being proactive is helpful there. But that also requires, I think that requires already to kind of know that you, you're allowed to do that, that that's how it works in generally. Um, and I think that's that's the step, like you mentioned, that many designers are not aware of it, that that's how, how this whole thing works. Well, like I see all the time people going on uh, dribble.com and they, uh, they they make a portfolio of their work. And a lot of times they'll create like um, uh, fake apps that don't exist just as design experiments, just to um, to stretch their skills or build out their portfolio, um, which is all good. And there's a lot of beautiful looking work in people's portfolios. But then you, you got to think, OK, if I'm a designer and I'm trying to build out my portfolio, um, maybe instead of creating a fictional app that that doesn't exist, maybe I try redesigning an app that that already does exist. And it, it could kill two birds with one stone. It's like it could be a cool looking piece for my portfolio, um, but I could also share it with the project. And, um, you know, maybe they maybe they don't like it, but maybe they do like it and want to work with you. Oh, yeah, that was literally what I was going to suggest, because at least in the Bitcoin space anyway, there's um, there's an array of different open source non-custodial wallets that you could go through experience document some of the ux challenges that you had on an individual basis or some that you identified that might be a a challenge for 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 lots of people and then you can go through the process of like thinking about how you fix those and provide solutions and like steven said like present them in a in a sensitive way to the teams that have been have been working on them for for generally long long periods of time so that's definitely a definitely a good way to to approach it i think uh, thank you uh are there any more questions for our audience okay i have one question so I know for like uh, open source projects, sometimes you will involve like designers as well as developers. So for example, as a designers, I often sometimes will hear them say, um, for people who don't know open source and they will be like, 
I don't have tech skills. I don't know. I don't see how can I contribute because open source sometimes they kind of interpret this as very like technical thing like oh you need to have like coding experience you need to be sort of tech driven to really contributing but um, I mean after I talked to some open source designer they tell me it's not true but how do you guys kind of kind of like tell these people to involve to come as a become a contributors and kind of like also there will be problems like sometimes designers and developers like they kind of speak different languages like maybe there are are there any like stories uh, you guys kind of like encounter examples like how do you kind of like let them be able to on the same page when a designer sometimes they don't even know what github is sort of situation at the beginning i guess like kind of involve a new brand new uh, designer to in op uh, welcome them in uh, open source communities yeah so i would i would say github kind of comes at the end uh, and there are plenty of designers who just will never become it took me years to it's not an easy thing but you know if you think about this open collaboration it can be anywhere you can create a google doc and share it with five people and they all can write text together and a lot of times that's what we do. We write like documents and text, or you can create a Figma file, or there are plenty of other tools where you can collaborate and you can share and discuss that file or whatever you're doing publicly and you never have to touch GitHub. GitHub is great for code. It's great for when there's like, there has to be one version of something that everybody kind of agrees on and slowly adds on to. But in the design process at the beginning where you just gathering ideas, you're doing discovery, you're creating wireframes and prototypes, you know, those are not this final thing. They're kind of throwaway artifacts. And with those, you can really collaborate in any way you want. It's more important there that you, you, you do this in a really public way, right? It's like, hey, here, let's work together on wireframes over here. And you give everybody access and everyone can comment and contribute in their own way. And then I think um, at some point, you usually have to touch GitHub, but it doesn't have to be the only place or even the first place. So I would recommend just thinking a little bit more broadly about open collaboration. Yes, because that's that kind of essence of open source without trying to being technical. It doesn't have to be. And it can be like a recipe sharing even. <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't think, uh, do we have any further questions? Okay, um, I, uh, I wish you guys can see the, I mean, the, <laughs> the audience. Um, anyway, thank you so much for your participations. We uh, truly appreciate you guys are uh, like stay up late and on the weekend and join us for this live Q and A and kind of enrich our Taiwanese uh, open design um, communities. Um, thank you so much for your participation. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Us. Thank you. Bye bye. Catch you later. Catch you later. Bye. Show she Ufan Jong S P I. Yeah.